instead of saying document dot ready we can also like refer to it in this shortcut format and that is perfectly acceptable all the changes all the um, um, events that we are going to be capturing would all be inside this parameters like dollar and then there's the function right so the dollar function that signifies the document ready so let's now write code so hide button clicking on hide button hide paragraphs This is the goal. So for that, what we do is we have to get the ID of the button. The button's ID is going to be hide button, but because it is ID, I put a hash, the pound key in front of it, dot click. So when we click on it, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this function, call this function. So when I click on hide button, um, an element with the ID as hide button, when I click on that ID, when that when I click on that button, what's going to happen is I am going to look for elements with the class hide content, and then I am going to hide them. Okay, so I can copy the same function, the same code segment snippet, and say for show button. Instead of saying hide, I'm going to say show. The goal is for paragraph 3 and 4 to be left alone. These should not affect paragraphs 3 and 4. That's the goal. Okay, I just built the application and I started it. Okay, my changes are over here. So I have the hide and the show buttons and then the four paragraphs. Let's see what happens when I click on hide. There, 1 and 2 disappeared. 3 and 4 are there. Click on show. Okay. Cool. So let me show you if I had just said if I had just said IS Express Google Chrome refresh the page, you can see that uh, we can step through the function, the JavaScript. Let's say there is an error. Like for example, I don't have a semicolon here. The build is not going to error out. You want to make sure in order to capture the errors, um, let's, let's just see here. You have to have web browser and then say Google and then what will happen is that it will enable us to be able to see the errors when you like launch the browser. For example, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cl click Control Shift I. That's the developer uh, tools. Okay, so on purpose what I did is I removed the parenthesis and the parenthesis and the semicolon from these two places to show you how an error will look like. When I built this code, I didn't see any errors. It was all fine. Then I'm here. Okay, I just launched my application. I click on hide, nothing happens. I click on show, nothing happens. So and I'm not sure what is going on, right? So what I do is I do a control shift I, control shift I, control shift I. Okay, that opens me the developer tools. If you see the developer tools right over here, it's giving me an error. That is where you can see like JavaScript errors. It says syntax error missing, parenthesis after argument list. So what it's saying is that I don't have.
you want to always make sure that before you go crazy as to why a code is not working, make sure there are no errors. So control shift I. See, there are no errors. I don't see any errors there. This looks fine. So let's go and click on our buttons and they start working fine. Uh, the syntax of jQuery is a little not very intuitive sometimes. There are so many parentheses and so many braces and so many semicolons. It's really possible for us to make a mistake. So you might always, you have to always make sure that you open the developer toolbox and make sure that there are no errors. So in order for you to be able to attach to JavaScript, just put a breakpoint. Okay, let me reload it. Okay, let's. lost it because um, the application was already running so let's do it again so this is the function that's for the document load and then it's just showing that it's loading those two functions in the memory and uh, when that event is invoked it will like step through the code like when I click on hide, see, it came to that code. Okay, that was fun. So let's see what else we can do. Again, like I said, this is a really simplified lesson just to give you an idea of what is possible with jQuery if you if you are not already familiar with it. So let's do this. Let's see. Call the red button. And when I click on this button, I want all the fonts to be um, like need strong and bolded, and I want the color to be set to red. And I want to be very selective where this happens. Okay, so what I want to do is. Always do this and then start the function inside. That way you don't miss anything. Here I want to make sure I get all the divs. Doesn't matter what their ID is and I want to add class. Add a class called red important. That's what I want to do. Okay, so a class is like a style. So we have to go to the content folder. This is what I just added. 